name's Sue Ann Watson. I work at James Cook University and I'm originally from England. I want to talk to you today about ocean acidification. So I'm just going to talk about what ocean acidification is, including carbon dioxide or CO2, which I'm sure we've all heard about, carbonate chemistry of the ocean, the pH scale, so that's the acid or alkaline scale, calcium carbonate shells and skeletons of marine animals, and the saturation state of the oceans. So we live in a time of really rapid environmental change. So since the Industrial Revolution, about 250 years ago, humans have been putting huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And this comes from the burning of fossil fuels, like coal and oil. We're putting this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at this ever-increasing rate, so we can see that even in the last 20 years or so, this rate of carbon dioxide emissions caused by humans is steadily increasing. Once carbon dioxide gets into the air, it acts as a greenhouse gas, so this causes global warming. Now this global warming um, obviously warms air and the land and the surface of the ocean. However, the oceans are also in equilibrium with the air and the atmosphere around Earth. Now what this means is that any um, gases in the oceans also go into the air and any gases from the air also go into the oceans. Now because of this, the oceans are actually uptaking all of this extra carbon dioxide that we're putting into the atmosphere. In fact, the oceans acting like the huge giant sponge they are have absorbed about 30% of all the carbon dioxide that we've released into the atmosphere. This is good news for animals on land because without the oceans doing this, we'd actually be much warmer than we are at the moment. However, all this carbon dioxide going into the oceans also creates another problem. Carbon dioxide in the oceans reacts with water a bit like acid in a fizzy soft drink. So it's this same acid, carbonic acid. And we know that drinking lots of fizzy soft drink isn't very good for us, so it's bad for our teeth. And one of the reasons it's bad for our teeth is that this carbonic acid reacts with our teeth and starts to dissolve them. So this same kind of process is happening right now in the oceans. This carbonic acid breaks down into two molecules, the bicarbonate ion and the hydrogen ion, and it's this hydrogen ion that actually increases the acidity in oceans. So this process of increasing acidity is what we call ocean acidification. So if we look back in history, um, we can see the change through time in carbon dioxide concentrations. Now we can see that for the last 650,000 years or so, these levels of carbon dioxide have remained relatively stable. But if we look just recently, so on the right in this graph, we can see that we've had this dramatic increase in carbon dioxide levels. So at 2006, for example, we stood at 382 parts per million of carbon dioxide. Now this is much greater than this sort of constant level that we've had before, which was about 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide. Now we're at 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide, so we can see that we've had this really rapid increase. And because the oceans are in equilibrium with the atmosphere, what this huge increase means is that ocean chemistry is changing faster than any time during the last 65 million years, and possibly the last 300 million years. So these are really big changes for life in the ocean to cope with. So because we know the carbonate chemistry of the oceans very well, so this is a chemistry of carbonic acid and the bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion that it breaks down into, what we can tell is that ocean acidification has already happened. So over the last 250 years or so, we've seen this drop in the pH of the oceans by 0.1 units. Now this might not sound like very much, but because pH is measured on a logarithmic scale, this is actually equivalent to about a 30% increase in the amount of hydrogen ions in the oceans, or a 30% increase 
in the amount of acidity in the oceans. If we continue on this path, um, as we have done for the last 20 or so years, by the end of this century, so in just about 80 or so years' time, we'll see the pH of the oceans fall by 0.3 to 0.4 units. Now this is equivalent to about 150% increase in hydrogen ions or about 150% increase in acidity. So this is a really big change for marine animals. As you can see from this graph on the right, and this just shows the areas of the surface ocean that have actually experienced some of the biggest changes in pH. And these changes are highlighted in these sort of orange and red colours. So the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is this organisation that produces projections of our future climate. So we've actually been tracking on some of the worst case projections for the last 20 or so years. And if you have a look at the graph on the right here, you can see that if we continue to follow this, we'll reach about 900 parts per million of atmospheric carbon dioxide by the end of this century. Now this is associated with this pH drop that I mentioned of about 0.3 to 0.4 units. But it's also associated with a decrease in something we call the saturation state. Now this is a saturation state of seawater with respect to calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is a really important building block of marine animals. Marine animals use it to make their shells and skeletons, um, including things like corals, are the main reef builders, mollusks like snails and clams, and crustaceans like crabs. So this calcium carbonate is a really kind of chalky limestone structure and it's made up obviously of this calcium ion and this carbonate ion. Common forms of calcium carbonate include these forms called calcite and aragonite. Now what we can see on this graph just on the right here is that this carbonate ion, which is one of these key building blocks of the calcium carbonate material, actually decreases in the oceans over time. So you can see from this pre-industrial level on the graph that as you move down to 1994, which is around a near current day prediction, we can see that these carbonate ions have actually decreased across the world's oceans, right from um, the latitudes around the Southern Ocean to near the North Pole. What we can see is that by the year 2100, so about the end of the century, these carbonate ions will continue to decrease. And what this means is that we're starting to approach these levels of saturation. So here we can see the aragonite saturation and the calcite saturation. And once these graphs dip below these levels, these calcium carbonate structures are going to dissolve. So they'll be going into a dissolution state. And actually, even before they get there, um, as the saturation state falls, it makes it much harder for these animals to make their shells and skeletons. So here's just a diagram to show you the saturation state in the ocean. And we can see actually that really in the deep ocean, we start to approach this thing called the saturation horizon. And below that, calcium carbonate shells and skeletons do go into a dissolution state, which means as animals produce them, they actually dissolve much faster than animals can make them. So um, there'll be no shells and skeletons there. But this process is also happening with our ocean acidification that we're seeing. And you can see in red here, these are some of the areas of the surface oceans that we're seeing the biggest changes in saturation state from the year 1880 to 2012. So the take home messages from this short talk today really are that ocean acidification is the reduction of pH in the oceans due to the uptake of carbon dioxide. Saturation state reduction is also happening and it's a problem. So these processes of ocean acidification have really been uh, occurring quite rapidly over the last 250 years since the start of the Industrial Revolution and are continuing to happen as we emit more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Ocean acidification causes multiple challenges for marine organisms, including those uh, that make calcium carbonate shells and skeletons because it becomes particularly difficult for them to calcify their shells and skeletons.